What ho there, my lovelies. Uh, today I've got a Twisby Eco to talk about. Um, I often show this alongside uh, size comparisons and whatnot, but I've never actually got round to talking about it. Um, one of the reasons, oh, Bill's got the day off, by the way, so here's his stand-in. Um, one of the reasons is this particular one has a um, stub nib on it, and uh, I've not... Uh, been in the practice of using stub nibs all that much over my uh, introductory years to fountain pen nerdism um, purely because I found it a little bit difficult to get the hang of uh, on a regular basis so therefore more than just a couple of words or something like that so if I went to do a full letter or a journal entry I'd get annoyed because of my alignment with the page so I didn't use it that much, but I've been able to practice a little bit and get a bit more comfortable with such things. So I'm using it a bit more. So I thought I'd run through it. Um, been around a while to his Eco, so maybe familiar with such things, but I will run through it anyway. Got a nice chrome coloured cap band here with Twisby and Eco Taiwan on there, uh, a clip with a hollow middle, which is perfectly usable, slightly stiffish, but perfectly usable. And you've got the faceted, faceted cap here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides, is that, is that octagonal? No, it's hexagonal. There you go, six sides. Twisby um, logo, uh, etched in the cap there, and a little surround where you can, you know, catch a bit of dirt and stuff. Um, piston filler demonstrator, obviously. Uh, piston turning knob. And again, you've got your hexagonal shape on the piston turning knob. Colour matches the cap. Uh, you've got a little O-ring here, which does assist... Um, for posting the cap, we'll come back to that. So clear acrylic slash plastic barrel, so you can see your ink sloshing around there, and obviously the piston mechanism there. Screw cap unscrews in a turn, which is nice. Again, you've got a transparent um, uh, section, so you can see the feed and all your ink traveling down what not I've got shimmer ink in here at the minute so hence you can see glitter traveling down and getting stuck in the feed and stuff like that um so section tapers down a little bit and you've got a kind of you've got a flare out but you've got it's kind of a it's a I don't know it's, it's going to say star kind of patterned flare out but it's a flare out nevertheless and then you've got a little notch there before you get to the nib unit or nib <laughs> just it's just, just a nib right um and a plastic feed so this is i want to say twisby's like number four size nib so four millimeters across and it is a 1.1 stub steel nib with the twisby logo engraved in there as well um threads here are not intrusive nice and smooth and you've got an O-ring there as well. Like your cushion close. So just as an aside, uh, this is not to be confused with the Eco T model, which has um, like a three-sided triangular grip section, uh, similar to Lamy Safari kind of thing, which will kind of direct your fingers uh, where to sit on the section. This one is round um, and you've just got that kind of interesting flare out shape there to stop your fingers drifting onto the nib. Um, so yeah, I've been around a fair while. Lots and lots of colours. So very collectible, lots of colours on the uh, cap and piston knob. This one in particular is the Jade which I rather like. Um, I was a little bit 
well, not that fast, etc. I suppose Twisbees are kind of um, love or hate kind of things, but conversely, I'm just in the middle somewhere. It's like, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's, it's decent, isn't it? Um, but back when I started out, I wasn't that fussed about demonstrators. Uh, I've come around a little bit. They're hardly, they're not something I actively really seek out to collect, but I have come around to the attractiveness of having nice transparent or translucent barrel, and you can see your ink sloshing around. It's quite a dark one, this, so you can't see it slosh so much. It's also clinging to the sides, but you get the picture, right? Um, I haven't got the box handy. I've had this quite a while, but they do come in a nice little box with um, a wrench to disassemble the piston and a bit of silicon grease if you want to lubricate your mechanism in it. And um, you can also pull the nib and feed out so you can fully disassemble that and wash straight through the barrel should you so wish. And if you're going to put something like a shimmer ink in and you're going to get glitter in there, then you can just pull everything out, wash it straight through and obviously soak your feed, maybe brush it with a toothbrush or something like that, uh, get all the glittery bits out. Um, so very nice and easy to clean. Let us look at some measurements. Uh, so you have capped, uncapped and posted in millimetres. So it does post, sorry. Um, so just squid it down onto that O-ring there and it does post. It does make it quite long, um, too long for me. I'm quite happy with it unposted. But yeah, as you can see, there's that O-ring there just to cushion the cap onto the back of the barrel so that it doesn't sit on the piston turning knob and risk turning the piston if you're posting that, which is a nice touch, nice bit of thought there. Um, so weight in grams capped, uncapped, and the cap by itself has got ink in it, so it's gonna be a little bit heavier. Um, barrel is 12.7 pretty much all the way along, and the section is 10.8 up here, going down to 9.4 just before you get to that flare out shall we do some comparisons okay then so four some size comparisons uh, that's annoying just get a two hang on there we go. you can see the bottom there you can see the top that's just about right so twisby eco going in there next to a lemon m1 and a lemon m2s which is pretty much the same pen but with different uh, adornments. You've got a Lamy 2000, a Moonman P136, representing kind of a Montblanc 146 size, Diplomat Excellence A2, Jinhao X159, and a Pelican M1000. So not massively oversized, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a bigger standard pen, I suppose. So, I just recorded the entire writing sample and realised that I wasn't actually recording. So I'm going to have to do it again. Just so you can see, because I was going to trap on about the ink a little bit. Uh, so it's Herbert Emery de Chavot. Um, so it's a nice, deep, greeny, tealy, with gold shimmer, which I very much like. So I'll just show that off quick while I've already done it. It's a birthday present, actually. It was a good birthday present. I'm really enjoying this ink. Anyway, should we do this again? Okay, sorry about that. At least I can turn it the right way up and I haven't got a right over the, um, whatever you call it, binding. So, should we try again? Twisby Eco, 1.1, steel stub, don't know why I wrote steel, I never usually write steel, there you go, unpredictable, em uh, Herban Emerald, Emerald de Chivor, as you saw there, I'm not writing it again, um, long period of silence coming up.
So it's a very smooth writing experience if you can keep um, your nib aligned to the page because being a stub, it's obviously got that flat point with very minimal to no tipping. Uh, so if you start to rotate that into the page, you're going to feel increased feedback or scratchiness potentially. Um, but, and this is what used to annoy me because I was very bad at keeping my nib um, aligned to the page for certainly longer sessions. If I wanted to do a really nice letter with fancy uh, line variation from a stub, I was out of luck because I'd get frustrated and abandon it and pick up something else. So it keeps up with quick writing. It's a really good feed actually. So it's a pretty wet, lays down a good amount of ink with um, no pressure whatsoever. So that is just under its own weight. Um, so for the natural line variation, you're getting a thick cross stroke, thick down stroke and a thin cross stroke of that stub nib so you're not going to get a lot more with pressure i mean this is with no pressure no pressure pressure you're not really getting much more there um maybe a teensy weensy bit but it's there to be a natural variation rather than one with flex so don't really want to push and flex that yeah so for wetness it really does do very well and the flow keeps up very, very well indeed, um, even considering that this has got a shimmer ink in it and that you've got bits of glitter all over the feet and stuff like that, it still flows through really well. So good nib. Reverse writing. Does make it quite scratchy, but can be done. Should you wish. Um, yeah, good performing nib if you know how to use it. And that was my downfall for quite a while. But I've uh, stuck with it and I've managed to get... Um, it's not leaking, by the way. That's just me dicking around with stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of um, took a while to get used to writing with a stub nib at all. Um, but once I have improved, certainly my comfort, if not my quality... Um, I've really enjoyed uh, learning with this pen because it is a very smooth stub and it's a very, like I say, it's got very good flow. Um, so it's good to teach yourself with if you wanted to do something like that. Um, but didn't want to break the bank. Uh, these come in around about £30-ish um, or whatever currency equivalent and depending on where you're shopping, but around about that mark. Um Available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and the 1.1 stub, and many, many different colour finishes. Um, so as I say, I wasn't, uh, didn't used to be mad on the kind of idea of the demonstrator translucent pen uh, when I started out, but I've come around and I've got a few now. Um, so I might do a little video on that, like changing tastes as um, my habit evolves, that sort of thing. Um, they're still probably not my go-to, but I do appreciate them from time to time. Um, it's good that it uh, comes with a wrench to disassemble the piston. So as I mentioned, you can flush the entire thing right through. Just pull the nib and feed out, unscrew the piston, then you're left with a plastic tube. And uh, it makes for very easy cleaning if you wanted to do a really deep clean. And also comes with a bit of silicone grease if you want to lube the piston up once you've done that for reassembly. Um, I do like the fact that the cap is uh, not translucent because um, if I've got a see-through cap I do get a bit annoyed if the nib doesn't align with the clip or etc so I do actually like the fact that the cap is not see-through that is a plus for me um, I like that little touch of the o-ring there um, for people who might want to post that 
it then does post quite securely and misses that piston knob, which is a nice feature. I don't post it, but I appreciate the fact that some thought's gone into that. Um, very smooth threads and minimal step here. And you've got that O-ring cushion there for closure and seal. Um, and it is a comfortable size in my hand. It's a reasonably reasonable bit of girth on there without being too, uh, too fat in it. Um, and a comfortable grip. You can get an Eco T model, which I mentioned before, uh, which has like the kind of triangular grip, which will guide you to where your fingers or where it wants your fingers to be, reminiscent of a Lamy Safari. So you can get that as well. That's... Apologies for the interruption. Um, yeah, so good things. And it's, it doesn't break the bank. It's about 30 pounds. Um, there or thereabouts, depending on where you go and um, your currency equivalent. But they're good pens. Um, I've heard the odd thing about cracking, but I've not experienced anything with this particular one. I did have another, I had an Eco T actually for a little bit. Um, uh, I don't have it anymore, but I didn't have any uh, cracking or quality issues with that. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I've not experienced it, so I comment on what's in front of me. Um, but yeah, it's a, good, it's a good solid reliable pen, starts every time. I mean, I've been waving it around a little bit and stuff, but starts right up. Never have skips or hard starts issues with this particular one, um, or the other one that I had, I think. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's good if you like that sort of thing, and I am getting to like that sort of thing. So I don't think I'll become uh, an avid Twisby eco collector. There's God knows how many finishes out there, but um, I may or may not get one with a different nib. Um, I'll see, but um, I'm enjoying getting to know or getting used to the stub writing with this at the minute. So, so yeah, it's a good tool for me. All right. I hope this has been not too dull for you and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.